Um, I'm Colin Gallagher. I'm the VP of product marketing at Weka. And let's get started. The one of the statements that's always true that people just throw out there, but um, there's a word for that anyhow. Um, but everybody has moved to the cloud. I think, you know, depending on the analysts, like one or 2% of organizations don't have something going on in the cloud. However, when you talk to customers about what their cloud plans are, two things come up. One is that their definition of cloud is always something very different. They're, using, they're looking to use cloud for economics for bursting. They're looking to use cloud for backup. They're looking to use cloud uh, <clears throat> to go all in on cloud. Everybody has very different cloud strategies. Part one, and we'll come back to that in a second, but part two is as part of these strategies, they've taken the easy workloads and moved them first. So they have moved backup, they have moved QA, they have moved the DevOps, they've moved their operations to the cloud. Um, but as I talk to customers and as others at Weka talk to customers, we find that they have workloads they call the impossible workloads, workloads that they're afraid or have to move to cloud or they've tried to move to the cloud and they haven't worked and they've pulled them back on prem. Uh, you know, they tend to be in a couple different buckets. One is because they're, you know, they don't trust cloud security, um, which we, we don't do anything Weka to help about. But the other one is that they, they have issues with cloud performance or getting cloud performance affordably. And that's where we come into place. Um, either they large, you know, they large scale workloads, they think they can't run in the cloud. They have high data gravity that's gonna cost them a lot in the cloud. They need a lot of performance and they think to get that performance in the cloud, they have to throw a lot of expensive cloud infrastructure at it. Um, or they just need to feel lo local. They need that low latency. They can't have their users feeling like they're running in the cloud. Well, at Weka, we, we think we can solve those and I hope that's what we're gonna show you today. But one of the reasons that customers say that they think they can't move these workloads to the cloud is because their cloud storage doesn't work for them. And so there, we see three types of cloud storage today, like the native cloud storage, which is super easy, super quick to deploy. It's integrated into all the clouds. However, because it's easy and quick, it's also feature limited and can be pretty slow. We then see the imposters. Um, these are companies who have taken their on-prem solutions and literally lifted and shift them, forklifted them into the cloud. They actually sit adjacent to a cloud or in the cloud, but it, it really is a couple legacy storage arrays with a little bit of services wrapped around them and maybe some APIs, um, but sitting cloud adjacent, but they are the exact same capabilities you got on-prem, but you miss out on all the benefits of the cloud, the elasticity, the ability to, to shrink, to, to grow, the ability to scale up and scale down. And then lastly, we have the doppelgangers. The doppelgangers are solutions where people have built cloud solutions um, from scratch. They've given them a, the same name as their on-prem solutions, but they don't have the same feature set. They may look superficially the same, but they're actually two underlying different products with a completely different set of capabilities. Um, and so customers have challenges because they don't know what they're going to get when they, when they go to the cloud and use product A from, from company and they get the product B, which has the same name and they move to a different cloud and the capabilities are there even, are even different. Um, so what customers tell us is that cloud needs to be a deployment location and not a set of features, right? So what we're really trying to focus on is giving you the double, double, the exact identical capabilities on-prem in the cloud at the edge, right? Um, because customers tell us they want the speed, the simplicity, the same data services they get on-prem in, in the cloud and no matter what cloud they're using. At Weka, we have been doing this for years. Um, we were actually born in AWS, launched at AWS reInvent in 2017. Um, we run the exact same code in, in AWS as we do on-prem. Um, we've been helping customers move workloads or run workloads in AWS ever since then. Um, we, what we do in, with Weka is we take compute um, and bucket it with storage, to, with storage together to deliver our high performance capabilities. And Shimon is going to talk in more detail about how we do this. So in Amazon, we take EC2 instances and S3 for long-term capacity, bundles together, present them as a seamless namespace, and there we go. Um, we also allow you to access all of your data um, in, in a wide variety of protocols. POSIX, S3, um, SMB, NFS. Uh, it's the exact same data that can be accessed concurrently by any of those protocols. So that simplifies your cloud deployment, allows, reduces the number of copies you have to make um, and allows you to run multiple applications accessing the same data. And by the way, we deliver anywhere from 2X to 10X better performance than the native solutions in, in, in AWS. Um, so we have been seeing customers move these impossible workloads to AWS um, in a wide variety of industries. 
Um, we have customers in, um, in, in medical and, and life sciences who are doing cryo, cryo OEM micro, microscopy, say that three times fast. They're taking <laughs> these large microscope images, capturing them in various edge locations, uploaded them to AWS, and they're doing processing them on the cloud. We have customers doing drug discovery and genomic sequencing, which we'll talk a little bit more later, who are actually leveraging doing genomic analysis in the cloud. Um, we have customers doing AI and ML in the cloud. We have customers who are doing quantitative modeling for high frequency trading in the cloud, building their models in the cloud, leveraging the cloud economics, paying for that compute and GPUs when they need to, and then releasing them and not paying them for them anymore and running the models on-prem. We actually have customers who are doing high-end visual effects production in the cloud, and you'll hear more about this later as well. So they're actually running visual studios in the cloud, something that was previously deemed impossible. But, and by the way, we do this really, really well. Um, Weka has established several performance benchmarks in the storage industry, um, the IO500, um, the Stack um, Financial Services benchmark, and SpecFS. We lead in all of these. Um, but the really important thing to note is that for the IO500 and the Stack benchmarks, we ran these in AWS. So we published industry-leading benchmarks running on cloud infrastructure. But you know, depending on the analysts you talk to, and actually I've talked to several of them, they all seem to gravitate around the 76 to 80 number. Um, most of our customers are running in multiple clouds for a wide variety of reasons. Either they're trying to leverage the different economics of different clouds, different capabilities, or they just don't want to be locked into a single cloud. Most customers have a multi-cloud strategy. And by, with an average of 2.3 clouds per customer. And by the way, as, as the enterprise size gets larger, you tend to have more and more clouds. So if, you, if you're a large organization, you are twice as likely in a small organization to have three or more clouds in your organization. Um, so what are we doing at Weka with that? Well, just recently we announced Weka 4, the fourth generation of our data platform. And the key thing that we're doing with Weka 4 is taking all the goodness that we've had for AWS and making it available for multiple other clouds, Google Cloud Platform, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and Microsoft Azure. So we're taking all the same capabilities we delivered for AWS and make it now available in all of those. We integrate with the native object capabilities of all those clouds as well. Um, so now we believe you can move any of the impossible workloads to any cloud, right? We're going to allow you to simplify the migration to the cloud and between clouds. I um, mean, by the way, I'm very big on prepositions. You'll hear that a little bit later. Um, we're also going to allow you to leverage the same data across multiple applications in these clouds. I said, leveraging our zero copy architecture, lowering your cloud footprint and your cloud costs. And lastly, we're delivering data reduction, both on-prem and in all these clouds. So you can lower your cloud costs even further. We actually bring the extreme IO performance and low latency that we've done in AWS and done on-prem to all of these clouds. We actually bring the capability to massively scalable, leveraging the S3 data lakes of all these cloud of all these clouds to you. And lastly, you know, we are optimized for small IO, large IO, high throughput, low latency, small file, large file. It sounds like a Dr. Seuss poem, um, but we can do it all in these without tuning and allowing you to work with on the same file system. So it's something that we uniquely do well. And Shimon's going to talk to you about exactly how we do that. But what we have done with that is we actually just published with Oracle some incredible benchmark numbers about performance. So, <laughs> right? so we actually can do two terabytes per second throughput um, 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 on Oracle Cloud infrastructure um, um, and 17 million IOPS in a cloud. Right? Um, so we built a cluster. Uh, and, and you know, there's a great blog post about this. Um, we have a little link to it on our on our blog site. But Oracle has done a much more detailed analysis with a lot of graphs, et cetera. But we can get petabyte scale with you know super low latency and high performance running on any of these clouds. Um, obviously, the, it's going to vary based on the infrastructure. But you know, we we will give you maximum performance across all these clouds, right? Um, but you know, this this is an you know this is Oracle Cloud infrastructure. It was a bare metal deployment with their um, HPC bare metal compute shapes um, and 3.8 um, <laughs> um, um, terabyte NVMe SSDs. But the interesting thing about this study is that we didn't require a lot of storage to get it. Because one of the ways you can get this performance, obviously, and I'm going to date myself back to you know, the, the 90s when I started storage, you could throw a lot of spindles at it, right? <laughs> uh, um, uh, but we didn't to get this benchmark, actually. There's one SSD per node. Obviously, we have a decent amount of nodes to get to the scalability, but we're not like packing it to get a lot of this. If you look at some of the other benchmarks, look at the storage that's in them, look how much expensive NVMe they're packing in to do that. And we aren't doing that in this, in this case. And by the way, 
what we've seen with Oracle, and you'll see, if you look at the blog post, this performance is linearly scalable. If you cut the cluster size in half, you'll get half this performance. If you cut it in a quarter, you get a quarter of the performance. So, right. And I told you I'm big on prepositions, and I told you that our customers keep talking about clouds in very different ways. Um, and what I like to say about it is we cover all of the prepositions for cloud. If you want to run on cloud, if you're all in a cloud, you want to run natively in a cloud, we allow you to do that. If you want to work better within a cloud, we allow you to do that as well. We will actually, we will automatically and seamlessly tier data um, down to the S3 layer and bring it back up as necessary. We'll also data reduce within a cloud. If you want to move to the cloud, we'll help you with that as well. We have the capability to do non-destructive snapshots from on-prem to the cloud. And then you can re our snapshots are fully self-contained. You can rehydrate those in a cluster in the cloud and begin and, up and begin and start running that way. We have several customers doing some interesting things with this, but I'll talk about in a second. Um, um, we can work help you work better with the clouds. We can use the cloud for data tiering. So if you're running a workload on-prem and I just want to touch your feet in the cloud, we can allow you to do that too. But use the cloud as the data tier for offsite storage and then bring it back as necessary. And lastly, we'll help you move between clouds whether it's between AZs for DR or actually moving data from one cloud provider to another, we can do that. And we'll show you both in demo and, and in customer environments a little bit later. Can you make it really cheap on egress fees? <laughs> <laughs> I think that always comes up. It's like, I want yeah. to move from AWS to Azure. There are two things we don't control, the speed of light <laughs> for data transfer <laughs> and what it costs for the, from the cloud provider for you to do it. Um, we actually do have some capabilities because obviously we have some capabilities, which I'll talk about right next, whereas when we do this movement, you know, obviously we have to copy the entire data the first time. In subsequent times, we'll only do the, the change data differential copy. So that will reduce it somewhat. Um, and obviously, as you all know, if you're looking to move into a cloud, you know, work with the cloud providers, they tend to give you a break on, on moving into them as well. But yeah, that's something you need to negotiate with your cloud provider. Um, one of the things we can do really well, and we've seen our customers do, is build some incredible hybrid workloads, workflows. Sorry. They're actually leveraging both on-prem and the cloud to do some of these impossible things. As I mentioned, we've had this capability before to take a snapshot from on-prem, move it to a cloud, rehydrate in a cloud. We have customers, again, I gave you the genomics example with the, oh, sorry, the, I don't want to say that word again, the microscopy, microscopy example <laughs> where they're capturing these images and then pulling up to the cloud. Um, but what happens when you, the next day, when you come and generate a whole nother second, second of images, they get stored locally, you need to bring them to the cloud. You generally have to unmount and remount the new file system to see those new changes reflected. Well, one of the things we've done in Weka 4 is we allow you to seamlessly move the deltas up to the cloud and then automatically feed those into the file system. So your file system gets refreshed without having to be to stop your workflow, without having to take it down and remount it again. So this is allowing these, these hybrid workloads to run nonstop and seamlessly. Um, so in quick summary, we really believe that Weka makes your cloud simpler through all of our core capabilities. The ability to auto scale performance across your cloud, to allow you to move, easily move data to the cloud, to eliminate data copies in the cloud through a zero copy architecture, to allow to automatically tier and restore data both to the cloud and within the cloud um, at the, for the S3 data lakes, to easily manage at hyperscale through our simple GUI, CLI, and REST API, and lastly, the ability for all of your data to be accessed simultaneously through all of your protocols.